So one of the hottest topics in Texas is always property taxes. For those of you that don't live here, we don't have a state income tax. For those of that you do live here, you know that the property taxes are a little on the high side compared to everywhere else in the country, but because we don't have income tax, it all washes itself out. But today I want to talk about some amazing things that are happening, first of all, in the great state of Texas, and second of all, in Wichita Falls, Texas. So stay tuned. We're talking about property taxes right now. So, hey y'all, I held a community meeting yesterday, which was Saturday. This should go up to on Monday, hopefully this video. So I held a community meeting on property taxes and it was a great opportunity for me to share some great things that are happening in the state of Texas, Wichita Falls, and all over our community. So what's coming up is a replay of that Facebook Live and live event. It's long, but the fact is there's some really great information. I've broken it down into chapters so you can go to the chapter that you feel like you want to know more about. But I promise you stay tuned towards the end because you're going to hear about something spectacular that's about to happen. Stay tuned. Okay, so I'm going to just basically get started. And um, if you're on the Facebook Live uh, and you're not going to hear this because you're going to come on later, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do any comments on Facebook Live. So if somebody makes a comment and you see it and you want to participate and ask the question through me, that's fine. But this Facebook Live is simply for a recordation of what we're going to talk about today. And so my name is Debbie Dobbins. I have been living in Wichita Falls twice. The first time I moved here was in 1996 was a complete God experience, said, go move to Wichita Falls. They said, are you out of your flipping mind? Because I'm a Southern California girl, born and bred, and said, no way, Jose. And of course, I can't disagree with that little whisper. So I came here, started the first female owned and operated mortgage company, made a lot of money because I hit the refinance boom back then. And then I traveled the world following my dreams, which was to be a corporate trainer for um, leaders, managers, supervisors, and also I trained in the mortgage industry. Um, I trained underwriters. If you have ever had a loan, you know what that is. They're the people that bless or don't bless your ability to get a loan. And I trained them on how to read appraisals and what they're supposed to look like. And the reason I'm telling you that is because it's going to be integral to what I'm about to say with respect to what's going on with our appraisal district. So from there, I did a few other things. I moved to several different states. I lived in um, Mexico for a year, and then I got cancer. That was fun. And in 2018, I almost died, spent all year being treated in the hospital multiple times. They took out some vital parts. That's not really important, but I'm here to tell you that I believe in positive thoughts, and I healed myself. I am cancer-free, and um, I... Sometimes people say, why do you go so fast and do so many things? And I say, I'm making up for the lost year. Well, I think I've already made up for it, but um, now I'm starting to bake it. So for that reason, I also decided that being a real estate agent was going to be um, a really good fit for my mortgage business. So now I do both, and a lot of my clients use me as their realtor and their mortgage person. But I love Wichita Falls, and I love our community, and so... I started a little group called Wichita Whispers because there was no place on Facebook or anywhere else that I could find to ask questions about what I wanted to know moving here for the second time. And now for those of you that are on that group, you know that I'm very, very, very adamant about staying positive. I don't like whining. I don't like complaining. I don't want to hear all of the problems. I want to get into solutions. So that's what today is about is a solution to this thing called, oh my God, my tax appraisal just came out. Because how many of you had that first thought when you saw your tax appraisal? Oh my God, what am I going to do? And the next thought that people have, which I find fascinating is, they're so mean to us, how could they do this? It just doesn't seem right. And they're after our money. And the fact of the matter is, is that there is money involved, but that is not why the appraisal district does what they do. It is a constitutional law that the appraisal districts in each county must 
evaluate and appraise, and this is the part where I, I can't believe I left this. Um, can somebody grab that and bring it in if you don't mind, just so we won't have that flip. Mark. Thanks, Mike. Mike's got it. Um, so I was going to read exactly what the Constitutional Tax Code says, but from memory, basically what it says is every year the county appraisal districts have to evaluate and appraise properties in their areas based on accepted appraisal standards. So what does that mean? If you've ever had a house and you had a loan on it, you got an appraisal. And that appraisal was done by a certified appraiser. And they have certain guidelines that they have to follow in order to determine the value of your property. So I often hear people say, um, when I go to list their homes, I want to list my house for, I don't know, $500,000. And they live in a neighborhood where all of the houses are probably selling for $100,000. You cannot do that unless you get somebody that doesn't care about overpaying by $400,000. So anybody that has ever looked at an appraisal, and I want to show just a little, it's going to be a really um, easy description. Let's see, this is your property, we call it the subject. Then you have comp one, comp two, and comp three. This is how standard appraisals are determined based on what the market looks like. So let's say that your house is 1,200 square feet and the neighbor's house needs to be similar in size. So we're not gonna compare your house to a 2,400 square foot house. Or we're not gonna compare your house necessarily with a house that has a pool or an outbuilding, okay? So everything about this house, your house, your subject house on appraisal that's done for mortgage purposes or estate purposes and all of that is determined based on the comparable sales. Comparable is the operative word. Now, usually what I tell all of my clients is everything's based on price per square foot because that's the easiest way for people to get their minds wrapped around it. Because if I were to teach you all about appraisals, you would fall asleep and go, I don't want to hear anymore and stop talking. So if you look at our area of Wichita Falls, the average price per square foot prior to this crazy market was somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 to hundred dollars a square foot. That was kind of average, you know, obviously it goes down, it goes up. It depends on your neighborhood. It depends on the, condition of your property and a whole lot of other components. However, now the average price per square foot for most of Wichita Falls is anywhere from $100 to, oh my gosh, I just sold a house for $168 a square foot. That's nuts, but that's the market. That has nothing to do with the appraisal district. That's just what's happening in the real estate market. The good news is we are still, 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 we just hit another list the second lowest cost of living city in all of America. So if you feel like you're in some pain, which some of you are, just imagine how much pain somebody in Dallas or Fort Worth or Houston, because they got some serious taxes there. So I'm not here to say, um, compare yourself to somebody having worse pain. I'm saying we happen to be in the best place we could possibly be. And I love Wichita Falls, and I will do anything to support and help this community thrive, including I just started, like I have no other things to do, started a nonprofit to help vitalize some of our less, um, you know, uh, help, um, how to but revitalize. That's the word I'm going to use. I don't want to call a, a neighborhood a specific thing. A lot of people just don't have any money to fix up their houses. But the thing is, is that the appraisals, have to be done by the appraisal district based on standard acceptable appraisal guidelines. They don't have a choice. They are actually, they meaning the appraisal districts are governed by the comptroller's office of the state of Texas and they get audited and if they don't do it within um, about, I think it's about a five to 15% margin, then they will get defunded by the state. Nobody wants that. So the appraisal district is only doing these appraisals based on what's happening in our market today. And our market has lost its mind. There's no question about it. But the fact is that there's reason behind that and that's another video and I invite you to go watch my YouTube channel because that YouTube channel is all about Wichita Falls. It's YouTube, um, you can look it up, your Wichita Falls. The um, 
The reasons behind it are numerous and varied, but one of those reasons, and this is not going to change in the state of Texas. So if you hear all of this noise out there, we're, we're gonna have a bubble like we had before, we're gonna have a recession, we're gonna have all these things. I'm gonna say something very important and I want you all to key in on this. It's not happening in Texas. Why? Because everybody like me wants to get out of the left and the right coast and get here. Because we have really great stuff going on here, right? We have no income taxes. There's only, I think, five or six states in the whole union that are like that. But the appraisal district is only supporting what's happening, on, happening in the market. The way you get to get around some of that is, though, and I find this fascinating, that there are so many people that own a home and don't have a homestead exemption. So how many of you own your own home, live in it as your primary residence, and don't have a homestead exemption? Okay, so I want you to know that's the first date that we're gonna talk about today. You have until the end of this month to file for that. And it's really easy, there's a form, it says here, do you wanna have this exemption? I live in the house, my name is thus and such, and here you go, and that's all you have to do. Well, the good news is, is that homestead exemption will automatically reduce the appraised value that you just got in the mail. One caveat though, a lot of people think it, it reduces the whole overall taxing business, and unfortunately it only reduces that valuation on your school taxes. So if you're new to Texas or you haven't been paying attention, school taxes are really the highest thing that we pay because we're paying for these lovely kids to be educated. And our homeowners are carrying the schools for the state. And if you think, because you're a renter, that that doesn't impact you at all, Mike would be lovely, would be happy to share with you, he has a lot of uh, rental properties, that it's going to be passed on. So I find that fascinating when our taxes go up, that renters say, that doesn't affect me at all because I don't own a home. Well, let me ask you this. If you were an owner of a property and you were renting it out and you were getting $1,000 a month for rent and all of a sudden you got a notice in the mail that said your taxes are now $100 more a month than they were last month, are you going to pay for your tenants to, to have that place and you're just going to absorb that cost? No. <laughs> no, you're going to pass it on. And the problem has become is that there's lots of renters out there that are now renting from investors who have come here because they, they found out the secret that Wichita Falls is really inexpensive and they bought all these properties and they jacked up the rents. Yes. So across, I know, and across the country this is happening, so it's not just happening here. So what I want you to know first and foremost is you're not alone, this is happening everywhere. And fortunately, we're having it happen on a much less, or a much smaller scale. So if you have your property tax bill, you'll see three things on there. And you can go to the Wichita Falls CAD, which is the something appraisal district. What's the Wichita C? County appraisal, county appraisal district. I, it's, yeah, but it's, I always wonder what CAD stands for. I know it's appraisal district um, because I just call it CAD. But the um, county appraisal district for your county and every county and every city and every school district is different. I've heard this so many times in my life since I've been here. Our taxes are the highest in all of Texas. Well, that's a lie. <laughs> so if anybody tells you that, you can say, you can go and they can do their own research, but people don't because everybody just believes whatever they see on the internet. Our taxes are not the highest in the whole state of Texas. What people look at is they're looking at bits and pieces of that taxing business, but here's what you're taxed on. Your tax, city taxes here in Wichita Falls, or Iowa Park, or Lakeside City, all of our little areas here. Because in bigger cities, they have a lot of other taxes, which I'll tell you in a minute. But we have city, we have county, and we have ISD, which is the schools. There's three different taxing authorities, and they all have different percentages. The school district is the highest. When you combine them all together, currently, and for a very long time, up until the bond measure passed for the schools, the, um, the tax rate for Wichita City was 2.4%. It's now close to 28 as is everybody else in our area. So I live in Wichita Falls, the city, 
but I live by the base. My school district is Burke. So you really want to pay attention to what school district you're being taxed by as well, because that's relevant. Most everybody here is around 2.8%. So if you take, let's say you have a house that's valued, I'm using easy numbers, $100,000, you multiply it times 2.8%. Anybody good at math? $2,800. That would be your taxes for the year. If you want to know a monthly amount, you divide it by 12. If they, if it was 2,400 because it was 2.4 before the bond passed, then it was 2,400. So you can see when you pass that bond, because you all voted for it apparently, that's what they tell me, you're, the, dis, the discrepancy there was $400. So when you passed that bond and you had a $100,000 house, your taxes went up $400 for the year. Everybody has a different, well, has a school district. So there's um, Iowa Park School District, there's Lakeside City School District, there's um, Burke, and all of those are what make that taxing rate a little bit different if you're in Wichita Falls. If you're in Iowa Park or these other surrounding cities, then their tax rates are gonna be a little bit different. I have seen tax rates in the Metroplex as high as 3.2 and above because they have a lot of other type of taxes with all their new building going on. So if you've ever been in a new development, you start to build in taxes for the infrastructure. They have mud taxes, which are the municipal utility district and a whole lot of other things. If you go to um, a site for the comptroller that tells you what the taxes are for each city, county, school district, and mud and everything else, it's very hard to read if you don't know what you're looking at, but you have to add up all of the taxing authorities for each one of those counties. Fortunately, we only have three, so it's easier to understand. So let's say that you now have a tax appraisal for $100,000 and you take your homestead exemption on your school taxes. So the school taxes are gonna be about half of that 2.8, they're a little bit over half. You're gonna take that $100,000 and now the appraised value is, for the school taxes, 75,000. I'm just using easy numbers so we don't get too complicated here. And you are gonna be taxed on $75,000 at that um, school district rate, which is probably around 1.6, depending on which school district you're in. Then your city and your county are gonna be taxed on your appraised value. The good news is about a homestead is, and had you all filed those homesteads prior to this tax appraisal, or now you can, you are only, by, by constitutional law, they can only raise your tax appraisal 10%. So if you're at $100,000, they can only raise it $10,000 instead of the 30%, 40%, or 50% that some people are experiencing because the market is dictating that. Is that just on the school district? No, that's on the whole taxes. Okay. So if you were, um, you filed your homestead exemption, you would only get a 10% increase. Now, the thing that I don't think that some people recognize is they are going to reappraise the property, meaning the tax appraisal district is going to reappraise the property at the market value regardless. So your tax appraisal may look like I got $100,000 for last year. They raised it to 110 because of my homestead, but the real increase in value was 130,000. So they're gonna reassess it at 130,000 because that's the market and that's what they have to do. You're gonna pay on that. So that, does that part make sense so far? So if somebody were to buy your house, they're gonna pay taxes on this because this is the true fair market value of your property. So you can see if they raise your property tax, or raise your appraisal, they're going to appraise it, and you may see that on your um, appraisal form right now, but this is the number you wanna look at, is how much am I being taxed on? So do I have any questions up until that point? Yes? What if you buy a house for, and you pay less than what they're saying it's appraised at? Okay, so we're gonna get into appeals in just a second. Okay. Okay, yeah. On the homestead, I filed that three or four months ago. Did yeah. they notify me if, they're, if they've approved it? Or you could probably look on CAD and see it 
before you'll actually get a notification. Okay. So I want to talk about homestead exemptions really quickly. So we are now in what's called the appraisal for 2022. Our appraisals, in, I mean, our, our tax years in Texas are a little wonky to me because I'm used to a different system in California. But so for, and this appraisal is effective as of 1122. They, they're going by January 1st, 2022, when they determine this new value. It isn't today, it isn't yesterday, it isn't last month, it's January 1st, 2022. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm already gonna protest my taxes and I don't have to, because I wanna keep them a little bit honest. But the taxes that you're getting that homestead on, if you file now, you need to have lived in that property, be moved in or at least taken title to it as of January 1st, 2022. If you moved in, because I had that when I, the first year I was here, I moved in on January 3rd. Guess what? I missed 2020. I mean, uh, what did I do here? 2019, 2020, I think. Um, because they're assessing the value for 2022. So does everybody know that that's the case for your homestead exemption? I don't know if somebody's walking she around. She probably is, but I just don't need the yelling. <laughs> so I'm, a, I'm a trainer, so I just have it distracting. Um, so if you if you just bought your house and it's January, past January 1st, January, February, March, or April, you can file for your homestead. It just won't become effective until 2023. That's the sad news. However, that's just the rule. Let's say that you bought it in December of last year. You can still file for this year, 2022, as long as you get that form in by the end of this month. That is the cutoff time for any um, exemptions that are being filed. Except there's only one other exception to this rule, and that is if you have a VA-related disability. So you might want to tell your, I mean, I, I hope you'll take all this information and share it with friends, because it isn't just for you, you specifically, it's for everybody that you know. If you have a VA-related disability and it's 100%, you have a 100% tax, property tax exemption across the board, which is, I think that's one of the greatest things that the state does for our disabled vets because they just have served our country and they've got a disability related to their service. There are uh, gradations of that if you're less than 100%. However, it didn't seem fair to me when I first learned about it, this, you have to file by, or you have to be in the house by January 1st. It's the only exception to the exemption rule. If you're a vet and you're disabled and you're 100% disabled and your taxes would be zero, it's let's say you bought your house in February that you would pay for almost 10 months of taxes that you're 100% exempt from. So with VA disability, you get your exemption right away. So as soon as you move in. So that's the good news. Everybody else with all of our other exemptions, and there's about six of them, and I'm not gonna go over them because the main ones are homestead and, oh, well, there's three. Homestead, VA disability, and then my favorite is over 65. So if you're over 65, you should definitely be filing for over 65 exemption because you get homestead and over 65. Now, the really good news is because I'm very, very much, I, I, I don't need it, but I know tons of seniors that are fixed in fixed incomes. And it's very incongruent that they would have to keep seeing their taxes go up even the 10%, right? Well, the good news is, is if you are over 65 and you have filed your exemption for over 65, your taxes, your school taxes are frozen, frozen from the date that you became 65 exempt, which is your birthday. So that's really good news. I think that's fabulous that we do that for our senior citizens because when you're a senior citizen and I, I'm on social security and they, gosh, I don't have to live on it, but they, the federal government gave us a raise and then they also raised the Medicare payment. So I'm like, there's no raise here. I'm actually paying, I'm getting less money. So if you're on fixed income, that's really hard to have to have your taxes go up. That's the good news for our seniors. Now, the next question I always get is, um, if I file this exemption, 
how much am I going to save? Well, you're going to take that $110,000, subtract the $25,000 from the school, recalculate your numbers, and that's what it's going to be. Every single person that has a mortgage, this is, I, I, I can't stress enough how important this is to know, to understand, and to be prepared for. I did a video last year in July on my YouTube channel telling people that have mortgages and you know, it's now, it's happening now, which I was, I talked about it last July because I could see it happening and being on the horizon. Last year, when we passed the bond for the school, for the school, your taxes for Wichita City went up 0.4%, uh, so 2.4 to 2.8. So that went up, then the appraisals came out and that went up. So everybody that had a mortgage got a double whammy because their mortgage company doesn't know that all of this is happening. If you're a mortgage company, which I've been in mortgage for 30 years, their little, their little servicing department is just sitting around going, oh, you know, we're collecting this much, it's going into your little escrow account, and then the tax bill comes to them. They're not getting any information about the tax appraisals, they're not getting any information you know, about how it's gonna happen, they're not getting information on bond, they don't care. They just go, oh, we're collecting enough to pay $2,000 for this borrower when their taxes come, and they get a bill for $3,000 when they're due in November. Well, what do they do? They say, oh, well, we need to pay those taxes because we have to protect this property that we have a loan against, so we're just going to advance that $1,000, and guess where they're going to get it from? Well, you, Yes. right? But what happens is it's called an escrow shortage. So now they say, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Borrower, what I want you to do is send me either $1,000 for the shortage or in the alternative, we'll just divide it by 12 and put it on your payment. Okay, well, that would be lovely, except your payment went up because of the $1,000 increase. Let's just say, well, we'll say 1,200 because it's an easier number. It went up, so now you're paying the 1,200 shortage and the 1,200 that it just went up. And what is that? $200 a month. That hurts. No, mine went up 400. Right, so, but I'm just using $100,000 as an example. Right, right. but and then it could be as high as 400. It could be 600. But here's the sad news. That was from last year. That was from the bond. That was from the increase last year. And we haven't even seen what's going to happen this year. So you need to be um, proactive with your mortgages and look and see how much they are escrowing you for. So you have the proper, um, proper amount going in there. You can actually ask them to change it and they'll increase it. You can set the money aside. I'm always about being prepared. So you wanna be able to determine whether or not you're gonna get hit with this big bill. So the good news is, ta-da! I know, because I've shown a, lot, I've shown a lot of not so great news. Besides the exemptions, in 2019, our lovely state, because you're not the only people having this pain, right? It's the whole state. And taxes, we don't have any income taxes, we have property taxes. So every property owner is feeling the same pain and guess what, they are complaining to their representatives. Our representatives heard us, they passed SB2. Does everybody know what SB2 is? <clears throat> not a clue, right? <laughs> well, it's good news for you because here's what happened. SB2 says we are putting a cap on this craziness. And so each of those taxing entities that I talked about, the city, the county, and the school districts have now new guidelines that they have to follow. That guideline says, and this is good because your appraisals went up like this because of the market. There's nothing we could do about that because it's constitutional. However, that would seem like, I mean, you can do simple math in your head, right? I don't, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. That would say to you, I would think, holy criminy, they're gonna have a windfall, <laughs> right? If they're increasing the value of your properties, your, the values of your properties 30 to 50%, somebody's making bank on this, right? Well, the state said enough of that. Besides your homestead exemption, SB2 says, the cities, the counties, and the school districts may not increase their overall budgets 
by more than three and a half percent for city and county and two and a half by two and a half percent for the school districts well that sounds really nifty what does that mean that means that they then have to readjust the tax rate to support you and not taking that money away from you because if they collected the 2.8 percent on your current values homestead or not they're going to have way more money than three and a half percent or two and a half percent so everybody follow that math so far mm -hmm. so what they are going to have to do and this won't happen until summertime so all the taxes that you think you're going to owe right now they're going to be lower because in the summer they're going to go and look at their budgets the city county and the school districts they're going to say oh my gosh we're 10 percent over what we're supposed to have they have to go back and re-engineer the rate not the value because remember the value is constitutional they're going to reevaluate the rate and then pass it on to you so your taxes are going to go down Woohoo, that's exciting. I'm like so thrilled about that, I can't even tell you. It passed in 2019, it was half implemented last year. This year is the first full year that it will be implemented and we will get a new tax rate before the tax bills come out. I'm guessing, because I can see where the values are and I'm sort of a financial savant that way, I'm gonna guess that our rates are probably gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of 2.2% because the values have gone up so much. So in a good way, those values going up shows an overflow to the city, the counties, and the school districts. That means your rate has to go down so that they won't have that much money. I'm not seeing big smiles. I think this is one of the most fantastic things ever. Yeah. <laughs> your rates are going down, which means your taxes are gonna go down. And if you filed your exemptions, then you're really in a good place. So, you're, you're looking at each other. What are you thinking? <laughs> He's got skepticism all over his face. Until you see it, it's hard to believe sometimes. Well, I know that, but it's, it's a law. I know. And so, um, I actually have been, uh, I had very long conversations the last few days with our current senator, um, Drew Springer. Well, actually his office. And with the tax office, our county tax office. And a lovely woman that used to be a client of mine. So. I'm here to tell you that they, every, everybody in the whole state is getting this, not just you. Everybody's getting it. And they're, they're, getting, they're under the, the new law. And it will be effective, or it will, the numbers will shake out in the summertime because that's when the budgets are done for the city, county, and the schools. So we aren't going to know exactly what it is until that time, but it is a state law now. So it cannot be fudged. There's so many, um, watch groups watching this process that they're not going to get away with anything which you know that was my first reaction is how are they gonna fudge this how are they gonna make it you know so it's to their benefit but the fact of the matter is is that this is something that's very 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 important to our entire state and so our legislature took it upon themselves to make this happen which I am very excited about because that's another reason I love living in Texas so this thing they just sent out that everyone's in an uproar over this is appraisal. It's not really indicative that our taxes are going to go Correct. up. Correct. That's correct. So I want, I want everybody to get, there's two components here. There's your appraisal and there's your tax rate. So let's say your appraisal went up, you know, $500,000, but your tax rate goes down. You're going to be paying a different amount than you were last year. That's, that's all there is to it. As I said, the good news is, is that these appraisals have created such a um, buoying of our budget because they're going to get all that money. Now, here's the thing. Also, not every single person is capped at their 10% because not every single person owns their own home. Enter Mike. He's a landlord. He doesn't get any of that. <laughs> so yeah, every... I'd like to point out that his landlord. Okay, good luck. Everybody keeps looking over his side eye me. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, is that he's, in this scenario, he's going to be paying on the 130. But he's also going to get the benefit of the lower rate. And the city has, will use his number to buoy up 
the valuations and the taxes that they would get. So it's not just you in the pie, it's the, the landlords, and we have a lot of them, or the investors, if you will. We have a lot of them here, and they are paying 100% of the tax rate at, up until now on those higher values. The good news for a landlord or an owner is they can pass that on to their tenants. As long as the lease is not, if I sign the lease in January, I can't raise their lease until next year. Well, that's true. So I lost a full year. So no, I don't, I understand where you're coming from. Too past on, I will, but I'm tied in with leases, so no. Well, okay. I'll, we'll have an offline discussion about that because I, I have some feedback about that, but it's too, it'll bog this down. Yeah. Can you forget that your values also include solar panels if you have? Yeah, they do. They're raising my rates because I Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah. 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 They do. Yeah. They do. They do. They do. Yeah. Well, let me go back to how that appraisal gets determined a little bit because I want to just move into you've got, you've, got, you've got great things on the horizon. Okay, the rates are going to go down because we, you know, buoyed it up with these appraisals and this is, this is great for our state, it's great for our community, and at the same time, the appraisals are not 100% accurate. Imagine that, right? <laughs> and I, as I said, my little papers that I printed out, mine particularly, because I wanted to use my personal home as an example. My appraisal went, so the first year I was here, I'll just tell on myself. The first year I was here, I bought my house for a little over 100000 It's over by the base, and I, I bought it at a time when we weren't in this market, and it had a little stuff it needed to have done to it. And the first year, they gave me the appraisal, and I went, uh, no, I think they raised it to 120 something I said, I bought it for, somebody asked that question, what if you buy it for lower than whatever? You just have to take the appraisal over there, but we don't have one, so we'll have to talk about that. Um, so I went, and, and I've also heard this many, many times, that protesting an appraisal is only for those people that know somebody. That's not true. You all get the ability to do that. And so I'm gonna share a little bit of how that works. And if I had the bandwidth and the time, I would help all of you, but I don't. So I'm gonna just give you some information and then let you find that pathway if you're interested. So they raised it to 100, I don't know, 20 something. So I protested it because I said, that's not even true. And I also, because I'm a real estate agent, I can pull all the comps. And I pulled all the comps. I went down there because if you protest your appraisal, you have to go, well, you can do it online now, I guess on a Zoom call. You go down there and there's these, uh, is it three? Three appraisal board people? Three or five? I think it's only five. three. I, re I remember only three people, but anyway, so they have a board there and they're just people like you and me. Because Mike was going to be on it. Yeah. So, but what happens is like um, a tribunal. So there's these people, they're all human, like citizens. And then there's the representative for the appraisal district. That's, it's a little scary if you're unfamiliar with the territory. He's like an attorney for the appraisal district. That's the people that made these numbers. And they've got their charts and their things and their graphs. And at the same time, if you go in there and you have the evidence that your house isn't worth what they say it is, then you can get it reduced. I promise you, I did it. And for two years, they didn't raise it. This year, it went from, I think I was at 130 something last year. They raised it up to 175,000. I went, what? Now, good news is, is I'm over 65. I got an exemption, all that stuff. And I thought, I'm not even paying attention to that. But... I started doing this, preparing for this class, and I went, they are out of their ever-loving minds about that value on my house. Because in my house, I live there, and I'm a real estate agent, so I know that I couldn't put it on the open market right now because the granite's half done, um, the, the backsplash is not done, there's you know, chipping and peeling paint outside. I know if I put it on the open market, I could not ask for that. I could, and I plan to put those, or shore those things up, but it's not the truth about the value of my house as of January 1st, 2022, just isn't. So I'm gonna go and appeal it. If you have any question at all about the fact of your appraisal being too high, there's this second date that I wanna tell you that's also the end of the month. If you wanna file a protest, you need to do it by the end of this month. I, I printed the form out and it's, I'll just do it by memory. It's um, a protest form, so if you just uh, Google Okay, good. But you can pro you can Google it under 
you can Google it under, these are comptroller forms, by the way. These aren't Wichita County forms, even though they may very well be on their site. So the protest form is just, you know, name, address, all of that stuff. But the, the thing you want to remember is section three, the reason for the protest. Incorrect appraisal value is unequal compared to other properties. That's basically the answer that you want to give. If you start marking these other boxes, they're going to call you on the carpet. They're going to say, that's not true. And then they're going to move on. Basically what you're wanting to say in all of these instances, for the most part, is that you, Mr. Appraisal District or Mrs., did not look at my house compared to every single person in my neighborhood. Because what they're doing is they are not doing an individual appraisal like an appraiser would, like an appraiser for your home on a mortgage. They're not coming. How many of you have had them come to your house? Not inside, right? They don't know what's going on in there. So you need to be prepared if you're going to protest it by taking pictures and saying, look, you're comparing it to these other five houses in my neighborhood that sold for, in my case, $130 a square foot or whatever it is. And my house on the open market would not sell for 118, which is what you're saying it is. It's more like 112 or 110 based on the condition of my property. So what that question that you're answering is incorrect appraised market value, because that's what we're determining in this process. The other thing it says on section four, provide facts that may help resolve this protest. I would just put in there simply, I have checked the, uh, I have checked the available comps. It's a standard answer. You're not committing to anything right now because by the time they take you and give you the, um, the date for your protest appeal, you're going to have time to do all of this. What I want you to do right now is get the protest in if you feel like your, your, your values are too high. Yeah. Just, okay, real quick, on a couple of things, because I've done this mm -hmm. several times. Number one, I was told very specifically by the appraisal district and the appraisal district board, check both boxes on there. Both boxes of what? So there were two boxes on there that, why you're protesting? The first two. Yeah, the first two. Because I screwed up and only checked one, and they're like, well, we these are what we used and uh, for comps. And so these are going up. I didn't check the other, which is basically proof that my house isn't like the others because I'm still going to work. Okay. So, anyway, I, I, and Mike's had his experience and I've had mine. So, uh, that, and that's fine. But the thing about it is, is get the protest in. True. And second of all, um, the opinion of your property's value, I would put nothing in there because the, it says optional. So you can put whatever you want in there if you want to do that, but you're committing yourself to something that I find, I like to leave uh, open space for something so that when I go to the appeal, that I actually have my ducks in a row. And at that point, then I'm going to spring it on them and say, this is what I think it is. You have your hand up there for a minute. Yes, yes. a wedding comp, you would say property comp. Property right? comps. How, how can we look them up? So, um, I'm, I, I knew this question was going to come up and I was trying to think of an answer earlier because I look them up because I'm a real estate agent and I look right. them up on, you know, the, the past sales. I'm thinking that the easiest thing for a consumer would be to um, look at Zillow. Okay. So on Zillow, when you look on Zillow, it has sold houses. You're laughing. <laughs> no, no, no. I, that, that's just for sold houses. Yeah. Do you have a better idea? I'm, I'm no, open. No, I, don't, I don't have a better idea except all Well, exactly. So that's what I, my answer. When I was thinking about this answer, I, I said, I, I wanted to say, don't call me. I mean, and I don't mean that. I don't mean that in a rude way. I'm just so strapped right now with so many things doing this silly real estate business for people who are buying houses. I last year at this time, I would have been telling you if I had the same meaning. I would say, call me. I'll pull your comps because that's what I do. I, I overcommit and then I'm just wondering why I can't sleep. But you can call if you've got a real estate friend, call them, use them. If you have a realtor selling your house. That they should do that for you for free. And, and if they give you that pushback that they're too busy, you yeah. say, well, you know, then when it comes time to sell my house, I'm going to be calling Debbie. Right. <laughs> um, okay. I also have a property, uh, I'm a property owner downtown. Yeah. I'm going to say the area mm -hmm. right in front of the bait station. Mm -hmm. uh, we've owned that property for 30 years. Last year when Valley at 30,000. Mm -hmm. This year they haven't valued at 80,000. Yeah. And I have, I, I can't keep it rented because 
because of the vape nation. I mean, they can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They use the rest, the, the back of mm -hmm. the uh, apartment mm -hmm. complex, the restroom. Right. So, you know, and I called them. I called the uh, appraiser that they did it, and she was like, "Well, the, you know, the property is selling, you know, for X amount." And I'm like, "What property?" And that's and that's part of the process of the appeal process. They have to prove that up. I'm like, what houses have sold for a hundred thousand dollars? But but you have to understand also that downtown. I know I know what you're talking about. That your specific location. Yeah. I, I mean, this is a perfect example. The appraisal district appraised my house built in the 1970s to almost the identical price as my mother's, who lives. We're all in Expressway Village over by the base. Um, build in the 19, closer to the end of the 1980s. She's got a pool, she's got all these updates. And I said, <laughs> that's not right. But it's because they're taking the whole area. I understand that's, yeah. it's upsetting, but also that's why you have the protest available. Yeah. So that's what I'm gonna say is do that first. Yeah, just real quick on the protest though, do go ahead and turn in your protest, but you can also make a phone call and ask to meet with the appraiser for your oh, area. she said no. They, yeah. They're not doing that, and that's over with. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I, that's, uh, so I don't, I, yeah. I'd, I'd rather you not do that, yeah. honestly. Yeah. I'd rather you just file the protests. Well, well I've because, done it before in my own home. Yeah. Uh, I did it years ago, yeah. which, you know, that's why I said, hey, I'm gonna ask her if she can right. come look at this property, because I'm not gonna pay, you know, over half of last right. year. Right. You know, because they're older. Okay, they're so they're what I want to do is, um, I'm going to stay here for questions after, so if you have specific yeah. situations, then we'll talk about them. Yeah. On um, the protest, mm -hmm. you, one of you mentioned photos yeah. or something. Do you send those in with protest, or do you wait until you have your interview? You wait until you have your interview. Okay. Because you're going to bring all of your documentation. Okay, yeah. thank you. The comps, like I live in Burke. Mm -hmm. If you can compare comps, is it just in Burke? Yes, or it's just Burke. Okay, so let me explain comps. Comps are your... Uh, um, standard appraisal practices are to compare compare houses in your neighborhood, not just Burke, not just Wichita Falls. So it's your area, your neighborhood. And so an, a neighborhood is not, let's say that I, I live off, here's Missile Road, right? I live off of, there's a, I told you my mom's house is over here and I'm over here. And then there's a whole, uh, section off pocket if you remember where the old um base housing was there's some neighborhoods over here this house is not in the same neighborhood as this house this house is in the same neighborhood because i'm not crossing over missile so if you're crossing over freeways major highways and all of that they're not in your neighborhood you probably know where your neighborhood is because we kind of know where our neighborhoods are but technically from an appraiser's perspective it's not crossing major boundaries. It's not crossing. So um, Iowa Park is over here, and there's the 44 right here. That is not in the same neighborhood as that. There's neighborhoods over here that are in Iowa Park itself, and there's other ones that are in Sunset Terrace. These are not the same neighborhood, but they can pull some of the comps from there. For our appraisers, though, they have to stay in those neighborhoods. Does that make sense? Just to be clear, there is a myth going around, and I've heard it a lot this year already, that they have to use comps from your walk, and that is not that's true. true. That's not true. So That's not true. Well, that's yeah. what I was going to say is when I called, she told me that, because I had gone through, which, by the way, you can find comps, you know, which I'm not sure if these are correct now, but for the appraisal, you know, for Wichita Appraisal District, that's what I did is I went and I looked at what everybody was valued Yeah, at. you could do that, too. And it was just easier than going to Zillow and going to. But no, I, I understand all that. on my yep. street, and yep. I told her that, and she said, "Oh no, your neighborhood consists of uh, over 400 houses." That's true. So what I'm saying, it's not your street. Please understand, your neighborhood is not your street. It's not your street. So it's like over 400 houses. It's, that yes. Are yes. Averaging. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's why you want to be able to pay attention to your house in comparison to your neighborhood. So if you, and, and I'm gonna just say, uh, I'm, I'm saying everybody, everybody um, file a protest. I don't really mean that because some of you don't have a leg to stand on because you just bought your house and it's hot and property and it's great. Some of you, like me, your house is not up to standards. So if you've lived in your house forever, you've never updated a thing 
and you're being lumped into the 400 houses in that neighborhood, then you are over appraised, I can assure you. But the appraisal district doesn't have the bandwidth to send an appraiser to everybody's house to make sure that you're getting equal treatment. They just don't, that's not the process they use. Everybody I'm sure at this point understands the, the term algorithm, right? We're, we're all familiar with it because of Facebook and social media. Our lives are revolving around algorithms. The algorithms that they're using is taking that neighborhood and basically averaging it with certain things. The square footage of your house, how old it is, what they believe that they've seen it sell for in the past few years. So there's a lot of components that go into the algorithm that you're not necessarily aware of, but you are aware of your own personal property. So you wanna make sure that you understand what you know the value of your house is. And, and I agree with you 100%, Zillow is full of BS um, because they're the bane of my existence, but they're either over appraising or they're under appraising. So please don't use Zillow for your um, valuation, but there's other, um, eva uh, what do I call it, appraisal management companies, uh, appraisal management um, websites that you can look at to get the value of your property. But the fact is, is that if you go and look, that's actually a, a good start, is to look at all of the na all of the houses on your street, because that's easy to go to CAD and do that. Yeah, that's what I did. I know, but that's not, that's not, I'm just saying that's a starting point. That's okay. not where you're going to use your evidence from. Okay. But you can get an idea of what they're doing with all your neighbors. And if you are from Wichita Falls, you're usually knowing your neighbors. And you can know if your neighbor recently updated, granite, sold their house, and they sold it for $200,000 in your house is worth really 150 because you know it is, because you haven't done any of that. It's all about the market value. So that's why I want to keep stressing the appraisal district has to prove that they're right about your market value. Not about what the whole neighborhood is, your house. That's why they have an individual appraisal for you. So it's important to understand how that system works. And if you don't have any updates in your house, then you probably are being over appraised because they put you in the algorithm for the whole neighborhood. Yes. So how do you prove that? Just with pictures? No, with comps, with comps, with comps. That's why I'm saying it's, I wish I could do this for all of you and pull the comps. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing is, is I would have to see as a person, um, a, real estate agents have a better handle on what the values are in the neighborhood than anybody else because we're out there doing it all the time. And so I walk into properties every day and I say to my buyers, oh, that's like overpriced based on the comps, right? Because right? that's what we're using. And that is determined by the condition of the property, the location, the amenities, and all of that stuff goes into the mix. I'm gonna tell you 100%, if you haven't done any updates in your house in the last 10 years, you're overvalued right now. That's what I told you. I know, and we'll talk about that offline. I know, I, get, I can't solve everybody's problem today, but we can talk, okay? That's what I was trying to get to yes. as far as like, if you had a real estate. Yes, yeah, they can pull comps. Can pull. Tell you that, but then you go to your protest, yeah. Is that all you need? See, I don't know what else you need. Yeah, you take your comps, and I would take pictures of your house so that they know that you don't, that your house looks like this house that you're comparing it to. And, and let me just say something about the pictures. So I asked her, I asked her, well, if you're not coming to see what I see, the reality of these properties, mm -hmm. how do I prove it to you? And she said, well, you can take pictures. So I asked her, well, how do you know this picture belongs to my property? Because I, <laughs> I can do pictures from the word of property I'm unfortunately. Okay. Uh, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to. And she said, she said, oh, we have ways of knowing. Okay. What I want to do is I want to stay in solution. Okay. And so, yes, you will have people say things to you on the phone because they don't want to deal with this. Okay. So we'll just stay away from that conversation. Okay. We're going to stay on the solution conversation, which is I will help any of you. I'll give you a half an hour on a Zoom call for free, which is a lot of time for me. I'm going to get to you in a second. Um, but the fact is, is that I just don't have the bandwidth to do everybody's protest right now. I just don't. But I'm going to get a, 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 an attorney. So, question, and then I'm going to tell you a quick story. Question. What do you need to do is keep your own appraiser. Yeah, and that's the other solution. Is you can get, and that's, but. That's exciting. That's no, I, um, okay, I know, I know. So, I, 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 pre, I, I knew all of these questions would come up. So, my answer to that is, you ordinarily, in a regular market, you can just call an appraiser. Right, and they could come over and they appraise your house. The thing about appraisals is, 
The thing about appraisals is that they are not objective, even though they're supposed to be, they're subjective. So I can have this, I can have an appraiser appraise your house and I want this value down here or I want this value up there and they're gonna find a way to make it happen. But if you hire an appraiser and you tell them what you're looking for and they don't have any regulatory agencies vis-a-vis -vis the mortgage industry that says you can't talk to them, you can talk to that appraiser all you want and you can say, I'm looking for this because I believe my house is worth this. And that being said, we are not in a market where you're gonna get an appraiser to come out to your house very fast because they're busy doing work right now. So that is the other problem. I knew that this would be a solution for some, but the fact is, is you can't get an appraiser right now because I can't get an appraiser and I'm actually paying them to do loans. So the thing is with an appraiser, um, it's easier because then you can just say, here's my appraisal and then they have to do it because they don't really have any choice. The appraiser does all the work for you. An appraisal costs about $300. If you're going to save that money on your taxes, if you think that your value is sufficient to do that, then I think it's worth it. There's a, um, a friend of mine that uh, <coughs> said to me that yesterday, she says, my husband, she says, I don't know, they've lived there for seven to 10 years. He's never had his taxes raised, the values, because the first year that they lived in their house, he hired a lawyer. And he paid the lawyer the difference between what he was going to save and what he had to pay and the lawyer's just been there taking care of him for that period of time if he needed them. But the thing is, is that once you, I, and I think this is interesting because I think they kind of, I know they don't, but it feels like it, that they put you on a, a hit list. I think Mike's on the hit list for getting raised every single time for every single property that he has. This gentleman's on the list that they don't want to deal with him because they know that, that he's, going to bring in a, he's going to bring an attorney in. So then there's all of you in between. And the fact is, is if you just start filing these protests, um, are you gonna get 100% success? No. Are you gonna get some success? Yes. And the fact of the matter is, is that it's incumbent upon each of us to take responsibility for our own financial health and wealth. I teach that in a lot of different other classes, but the fact is, is that I'm trying to give you information today so that you can actually do that. And I will do my best to help you offline a little bit. And we, I'd love to answer every single minutia question, but we don't have the time. And I know that people need to um, get on with their day. I do want to touch on um, two more things. And um, on May 7th, so this is a very important date. I want you to write this date down too. May 7th, we're having an election. There's uh, city council stuff going on and a whole lot of, you know, it's one of those elections that nobody goes and votes. And I wasn't even going to vote because I thought, I don't know. It's like, I, I don't even know what I'm doing on May 7th. But as I'm researching all this, I went, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? There are two tax bills, constitutional amendments on the ballot. And I hear all the time people whining, complaining about things, but they don't do anything about it. And now we have something we can do about it. One of those um, constitutional amendments is that they, that the request is to raise the homestead exemption to $40,000. Ka-ching! Now, if you already got one, it's only 15 because you're adding it onto there. But if you've not filed it, that's 40,000. And it takes place this year. Early voting starts on the 26th of this month, I believe, the 25th or 26th. And if you're not a registered voter, you have until that date to get registered. If you aren't a registered voter, please go register to vote so you can vote in this election so that we as a state can have that homestead um, exemption raised to $40,000. Yeah. That new homestead exemption, uh, 40? It, only, it only qualifies after the fact. After what fact? It's, 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 uh, it's if, effective. If you, if you had already filed a homestead exemption before you got the $15,000 rate or whatever, no. No, it raises at forty thousand dollars for everybody who's homesteaded in the state of Texas, twenty twenty two. Do you have to refile? No. Mm -mm. Once you have filed any of your exemptions, once you filed homestead, VA disability, over sixty five, and the three other goofy ones, they're on there. You don't have to ever refile. Okay. Um, the second one on that ballot is for. Seniors, like I think it's really important that we take care of our vets and our seniors. 
Not because I need be, need taken care of, but I believe that there's plenty of people in my age category and above that we are dismissing in life. And so this second component will um, freeze basically more or less. We're frozen at the school district taxes, but they are going to give us the benefit as seniors of this new rate, which we somehow are falling below the, the loop, if you will. Remember I talked about how they're gonna have to lower the rate on these new appraised amounts? Well, we're not gonna get as much benefit because our taxes are already frozen. So it's a little convoluted language in there, but the fact of the matter is, is if you wanna help all of our seniors, vote yes. Vote yes on both of them. Please, please, please don't forget to vote because this is really important to you and to everybody else. And if you know anybody and you talk about this or you don't talk about it, just say it, please tell everybody you know. Tell everybody you know about anything that you learned here today. Tell anybody you know about this bill that's coming up. Tell anybody you know about this vote and we can make a difference. I know that that's kind of cliche for a lot of people because they just sit around and watch um, you know, TV or play on the computer, but the fact of the matter is, is that we have to be proactive to do things. This is not a political discussion. This is a discussion for you and your finances. So I'm hoping that I've given you some information today that you can use and help alleviate the process that everybody has been griping about because honestly, I was super excited. I thought I was just gonna come in here and tell you about how appraisals work and you know, bye bye. Just be happy and get over it. I found out so much great things, so many great things that are happening between the SB2, between this vote that's coming up, between um, what's gonna happen in um, July-ish, and um, it's just to me, it's, it's exciting to live in Texas because we are such an amazing state, that's why we have three new um, House representatives and California lost theirs because they're all coming here. And just, I think I said this in the beginning, if you think that there's a bubble coming for the real estate business, there, may, there will probably be softening throughout the country because this is not like 2008. The dynamics for our market are completely different. However, it's not gonna happen in Texas. And we're very insulated here. And I want you to know that you're very, very lucky to be living here. I do business in the Dallas Metroplex area as well. And I, I don't wanna be there very often, but I have certain clients that, you know, they've lived here, they're moving there for whatever reason. And if you think you're having trouble here, first of all, it's, you can still buy a house and have a loan. You can't touch a piece of property in Dallas, the Metroplex, Fort Worth area, um, with a loan because everybody's being beat out by cash. There's 50 offers on every property. They have to do what's called appraisal waivers. So people are coming out of their pockets with cash like crazy. And it's such an amazing little community. And I, if you watch my YouTube channel, you know, I just gush and gush and gush about Wichita Falls. People ask me all the time, why did you move from California to here? I said, you couldn't pay me uh, enough money to go back to that place. That is a horrible, horribly run state. And yes, yeah. there's a beautiful beach, there's a beautiful ocean. I mean, there's a beautiful ocean and there's beautiful mountains and all that good happy stuff, but the fact is is that you are so damn lucky to be living here, and that's why I'm super positive all the time, because I want to be able to uplift this community in any way that I can. So I'm going to just take a few last questions and then let you have the rest of the afternoon for yourself. Yeah? Chandler Crouch in uh, Fort Worth has some stuff on their website. They're really great guys. Chandler Crouch? Uh-huh. My daughter lives in Haslett. Uh -huh. and they helped her on a protest on her house. Yeah, so write that online. down. Yeah, Yeah, they go online and they'll be supporters. Yeah, that's a good idea. And you know, I mean, any place, I didn't get resources for protests of various things. I mean, I suspect if you went on Google and said, you know, um, nonprofit entities that help with protests or this person, there's always outlets. What I'm here to tell you is there's opportunity for you to do that, that there is a method to accomplish it, that you should take advantage of that, that good news is happening for us, there is an opportunity to, to increase that homestead exemption, and at the end of the day, the state, and this is, this is the only political conversation you're gonna hear from me, the state right now, with its current administration and legislature, is dedicated to taking this 
under their wing and making sure that taxes, property taxes, are not crippling the state. That's what their, that's what their intention is. So if you do anything other than notice that and then support that, because if you put something different in there, you may not have that, I promise you. And I'm not gonna make any more political statements, but um, I think that this is just an opportunity for us to share with other people as well. When you hear people complaining about things, my, my answer is always, where's the solution? And I believe that I've given you several solutions today to what's about to happen, and I hope that I can help you in some way. Um, my, um, the easiest way to get me, I'll just uh, tell you if you wanna write it down, is to text me at the 940 number, which is 940 four six three five five four three um calling me i hardly ever check voicemail because i just text or email it's the easiest way to get me but i can answer questions i can lead you in directions as i said if you really feel like you're completely lost and you need some help you can schedule a zoom meeting with me and i'll just go through as much as i can YouTube. pardon me YouTube. it's under youtube and you just type in your wichita falls y-o-u-r your wichita falls so I have a page, Your Wichita Falls, I have an Instagram, Your Wichita Falls, and I have a YouTube channel, Your Wichita Falls, and then we have Wichita Whispers. So um, I know that this was a lot of information, and I hope that you gained some optimism as a result of it. Does anybody feel like they have more optimism than when they walked in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I do have a question, though. Uh, you said our original tax rate was about 2.4%. At the original values, we'll keep around numbers like you did, 100,000. Mm -hmm. Let's say property value went up um, 50,000 per capita on everybody's house mm -hmm. at, at 2.8. You also went back and said you foresee that the um, tax rate's going to go down to a potential 2.2. That's my that's my guess at this point. That's still going to be a 900 dollar increase of what people were paying over their taxes. So I'm trying to figure out where exactly well, those okay. check and balances are going to happen within the state at the higher levels that will. Well, well okay. Here. So first of all, let me just backtrack a bit. The 2.4 is <coughs> it's no longer because basically we were everybody except for in Wichita City, which is Wichita Falls ISD, was at 2.8. So we're, we're all, we just got even Steven when that happened. So I don't want to compare 2.4 to 2.8 because we are going backwards. And the only reason that that happened for people in Wichita Falls proper was because we voted on a bond. Now, I was, I wasn't for the bond, but that's okay. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that here we are. And the other thing is, is that um, I would say that everybody has the ability to change the administration of our community because there are leaders in the city, there are leaders in the county, and there are leaders on the board of the school. So if you're not paying attention to how those people are stewarding your money, that's important. You know, this is not happening to us, it's happening through us, because we elect these people, every single one of them that are making these decisions, in my humble opinion, which I don't have time to do any of it, um, is that we should really hold the feet to the fire of these elected officials, particularly, hmm, I don't know, the school board, the city council, and the county. <laughs> Those are the three entities. But you, you have to do that with your vote. You have to. I can't make that happen. But I don't want to get into a political conversation about that. This is very, very important. These individuals, these elected officials, are stewards of your money. These taxes just don't magically appear. And so, I know that nobody wants to do this, right? That's why I'm like, I think rather just say, oh, just, you know, I'd rather complain about it. But the fact of the matter is, is that if you figure out by looking online, because there's all the information you ever needed online, that they are not stewarding your money very well. It's called a budget. So let's get it under control. We have a great, lovely role model called the federal government that doesn't understand what a budget is. I don't know about you, but I have one for my personal life. Right? If I have this much money coming in, I can't spend this much unless I want to be oppressively in debt or feel like I'm just completely underwater. So there's, there's stewards of our money and those are called our elected officials. That's a different discussion, I'll have a different meeting and we can you know, all figure out a plan. But the fact is, is that your, 
you're correct if we're going to compare the 2.4 to 2.8, but for now, we just really need to compare 2.8 to 2.8. But yeah, on you saying that potentially it's going to go down to a 2.2. Right. Doesn't these school bonds that were voted in allow the city to maintain some of that tax rate? No. Because it was voted in. No, because it's for um, maintenance and operations is the only thing that they can come can deal with it on. The bond is a completely separate issue. So they're going to be dealing with that for that school rate from what's called maintenance and operations. It's a it's a technical thing, but the fact of the matter is is that your rate's going to go down. I promise you that. I know. <laughs> Pessimism, I love it. <laughs> yeah. You said the school board, city council, and the county. County. The county. There's uh, county commissioners, so they're all elected. So. I thought I had one more thing I wanted to say. I oh, what and one thing, uh, the lady that did the appraisal, so I asked her, you know, what's the turnaround because um, a friend of mine had sent her, her, uh, her uh, dispute in, mm -hmm. she already got a denial. It's not even a week. That's what I mean. But then you appealed the denial. Yeah. So if we get, a they, they say no, you know, the, the price is in. Mm -hmm. Can we appeal? You have a hearing. So the thing is, is on that protest, if you didn't say that you wanted a hearing, then if they denied you your hearing, then you just say, I need my hearing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the sheriff refused to come. She was like, nope, we're not doing that. I'm like, it's okay. at the hearing that I can yeah. Okay. So, yes. so what I'm going to say is um, there's always going to be cases where it feels like an uphill battle and it feels like you're not getting where you need to be and Mike will attest to this, that I am like a dog with a bone. So I invite you to be that same way. Don't give up when somebody tells you no. You never get anything in life that way. <laughs> right? You tell me no all the time. I tell you no all the time. I do not. Yeah. Houses, yeah, well, yeah. It's a different kind of no. Um, so what I want to say and leave you with is that we have absolute hope. We have optimism. We live in an amazing place. And um, if you tell me something other than that, I just won't listen. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that wraps up this community meeting. I hope you gathered a lot of information because there's so much good happening in our community. And as I always say, y'all come back now. You hear?